Welcome back everybody, friends and colleagues, to another GB Studio video. In this one we're going to be talking about my submission to the GB Compo 2025. I submitted an EP, uh, a music album, um, all made with Game Boy. And in this video I'm going to be showing you some techniques of how you can transcribe from a guitar to GB Studio and some help along the way. Let's quickly look at the album I put up though, show you what it looks like. You can you can listen to the songs. There's five tracks here and you can switch between them. They each say what the kind of song is about. Um, I used to uh, do this uh, a few years ago when, well, before GB Studio got its own built-in tracker. I'd use OpenMPT, that software, if you remember those videos, I made like uh, a Beatles song and like Soundgarden maybe. Um, so this was a nice uh, change and I do want to make more Game Boy music because it is fun. So I'm hoping uh, this uh, tickles you guys fancy, you know? So without further ado, let's get into it. How do we start? So first you want is your song. So let's imagine it's either a song you've already written or a song that you're gonna take from the internet, right? That already exists and you can look at how to play it. So if we have a look at GB Studio, there's a couple fundamentals, right? Um, there's a song called Soul Mantra, the first one on the, on the EP. And we have this uh, Duty 2 channel and we have these notes placed here. This is like an ascending note structure, right? It's like half an of an arpeggio. And in duty one, we have nothing. That one's saved for the melody. And then in the wave channel, we have these um, bass notes, basically. And then we have a drum beat on the noise channel. So what we want to be doing is finding like what the song is, right? So the song is, for me, I think of songs as chords with a bass note and a melody on top, right? So unfortunately you can't play more than four notes at once, right? Though duty one, duty two, the wave and the noise. And that means that we can only have four notes playing at once. One of them is a noise channel. And so technically you can get a chord out of it by using both duty channels and the wave channel. But I found with this EP that it was actually probably better to use these ascending arpeggios, right? because it kind of, it makes the song move, it kind of gives the song kind of like this quality that you might not, that you don't really get from the whining drone sounds of, of the notes, right? You have to remember this is the Game Boy, so it's like a bit buzzy, a bit tinny, tinny is the word. Yeah, these arpeggios are probably where you wanna go. Let's have a look at my other songs quickly and have a look. Um, this one is actually an arpeggio, it goes up and down and on the second chord or on the second time round, it has more notes in here so it sounds more interesting and near the end it does it quicker and i found that the quicker it sound the twick the quicker you do it the more it feels more like a normal chord despite it looking more like a melody right so i do recommend experimenting but the basics would be to just take your chord and deconstruct it into these notes right and so to do that I found a couple websites. So the first thing you might uh, want to do, pick up your guitar. If you already know how to play guitar or piano, uh, then you, you'll already be a step ahead, right? The idea is that we're going to be transcribing for, G for GB Studio. With this technique I'm going to show you, you can basically turn any, um, any riff or any chord that you come up with into uh, GB Studio music by using these websites I found, right? So the first website is called Chord Analyzer and with this one we can put in the notes of our guitar that we're doing here, right? We can visually look at our fingers and we can place them down. So for example, if we know it's an open E string, um, there's this, 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 a couple of open strings, it says, oh, that's the E chord. So if you don't actually know exactly what you're playing or you, for example, if you have a capo on your, on your frets, you can you can basically place the the notes in that exact location and find out which chord you're playing, right? Um, so this is actually a good technique for learning, you know, exactly what you're playing as well. And also when you find interesting chords, like if I was to, for example, I found B minor seven. I don't, you don't know the name of it. I thought I knew the name of it, but maybe you don't, right? Or how does it change when if you were to add a different note, right? And uh, you can visually see that we've got an F sharp, C sharp, A, D, right? So we can then go back into GB Studio and place these notes. So 
if we've got E, B, and G sharp, um, you can also just Google, if you know what chord you're playing, you can Google what notes are in that chord, obviously. I found this was really useful when I was, because I have some weird chords that are just a normal chord with a with a note removed, especially if you don't know the, the names of the notes on the, on the neck of the guitar very well. So down here we've got the E, G sharp, and B. And although it doesn't necessarily say it on this piano roll, you can see it from the C that this one would be B, that would be B flat or A sharp, right? And so we can kind of read it like that. that so that's one way of transcribing what you are doing with your fingers on a guitar into GB Studio. Another way we can do it is literally by using a tuner. If you're playing a, a melody, then you can you can play the note and it will it will tell you which note it is. And it will even tell you which uh, octave it is in as well. And then you can transcribe that into GB Studio. And this this is how I did it for the melody, right? When I was singing, I was I was trying, I was like only and then when you stop the guitar and keep the note going of what you're singing it tells you what note you're singing right so then you can then put that into gb studio so that's how i got my melodies that i was singing into gb studio because i have no idea what note i'm singing really right and along with the chord analyzer you can put what you're playing on guitar and what you're singing into gb studio by looking at the notes on the piano roll so I'd say that's the basics of transcribing a song into GB Studio. Um, but then we have GB Studio itself with things like making the guitar sound like a guitar, right? And I do recommend using these built-in template sounds, right? Like starting with them. Because there's one down here called Pulse Custom Vibrato. And if you go into the sub pattern, it has vibrato, which is where it's it goes in and out of the note, right? I believe that's what this is. There's two kinds of like vibrato, I guess. One where it's like going in and out of the note, which makes it sound more human. And then another one where it's uh, making the volume go back and forth. So it's making the dynamics sound more human, right? And so these sub patterns help to make the music more interesting. I believe that I have, there's one, yes, here's one. It says minus 12. And that means that the first note it plays is an octave lower than the rest of it, right? So let's find one where I did that. Here we go. In in Ghost, we have plus 12 and then zero. And if we can hear it, the idea is that it starts an octave higher and then goes to the note that I've set in the piano roll here. So for a one tick, it's higher pitch, and then it goes down to the normal pitch I've set, which is a bit like the 12 string that, I am, uh, that I'm actually playing on, right? Or a banjo, how it sounds higher pitch, it goes bing. But the idea is that we're making it sound more like a guitar or sound more human or just sound more interesting in general, right? Obviously these duty channels have more control with the wave channel, like even when you're just setting the instrument, if we go over here, then you can see that the volume can only be like set like that. It implies you can do it in the sub pattern as well, but I feel like I haven't had as much success in it or I've, the examples aren't as present in the template instruments. Yeah, go and, go and experiment with it. I also found that the noise channel that the, I found like my favorite sounds and then I stuck to them and I didn't really, I didn't really go too crazy. I know that um, Tronimal has some tutorials on how to make better drum sounds but I ended up just stick, sticking with the basic snare, the second bass drum, and then the open and closed hi-hats and a crash and every now and again, you know what I mean? Um, it's really up to you how you experiment. And I do recommend experimenting in order to make the music making fun, right? Have fun with it and uh, don't be afraid to experiment. Look at the documentation in the music editor. Here we go. Then we can have a look at the piano roll. Yes, tracker, yes. Um, the real in interesting things are the effects, which are right here. But yeah, I think I'll leave it there, guys. If you play guitar and you want to transcribe what you're playing, then use this website called Ulimo. I'll put a link in the description. 
You can also use a tuner. I use this tuner-online.com and I use, I just go on this 12 string one because I always use it to uh, tune my 12 string. Remember if you are writing a song, just quick help, then you can put your chords in and it will give you uh, a key that, or like the key that it's in. And then once you've found a key, you can use this website that I've shown you before called One Motion Chord Player. You can set that key and then you have a setting on that lets me see minor and major. And then you can, can compose a song using all of the uh, chords in that key. And this is just a way to push yourself experimentally, right? Um, don't, you remember, you can just Google stuff if you don't know, like how do I play a C7 chord? Google it. Um, and it will help you uh, branch out your songwriting. And yeah, obviously guys, you all know it's, it's all about experimentation. Have fun with it. Don't think about the final piece too much in the beginning. Like write the song for you and then come back and make it for the thing you need it, right? So now I've got these songs, I might make them into more condensed, interesting, gamified versions that loop better and that can be put into your games. And I might put them up for my patrons on Patreon. And on that note, I'll thank the patrons. You guys are the absolute best. Thank you so much for supporting me. Remember to like the video if you like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what you thought of this video and what you want to see next. Was this helpful? Do you play guitar? Have you written songs and want and could they could they be transposed for the Game Boy? That's what's cool, right? There's um, a song is a song, and I actually like the way my songs evolved from trying this was uh, interesting. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's good practice to experiment with transcribing your music. I feel like I learned a bit about music theory by doing this, so I recommend you guys do it too. And on that note. I'll say goodbye. Thanks you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.